All right, what's going on, Perth, Western Australia? How good is this crowd? Man, we are so spoiled every time we come here. Thank you all for coming out all week, showing these athletes all sorts of love. This, of course, our official UFC 305 press conference, this live event taking place in WA, the dream state, with the proud support of the government of Western Australia through Tourism Western Australia. All right, with that, who has the first question? Oscar Willis, go ahead. I'd like to start off with uh, Drikus de Blessy. Drikus, you know, before we get to the personal issues between you and Israel, just talk to us about this fight itself. Is this a fight you have to make ugly to win, or can you outclass Israel on this weekend? Well, I mean, this fight, every single fight, I fight the way I fight. Like you can hear, a crowd favorite. I make the crowd make noise, and that's what I'm here to do. I don't have to make it an ugly fight. I will be making it an ugly fight. I can make it a pretty fight. I'm winning the fight. That's at the end of the day what's going to happen. You know, everyone here knows why Israel doesn't particularly like you, but in the countdown, you say you don't like him. But I don't know, really, has anyone asked you, why don't you like Israel Adesanya? Well, I mean, like I said, as a, on a personal note, hey, Okay, I know what this is about. You want to boo the Springboks, not me. It's the hay who whipped your ass. It wasn't me. Chill out, guys. Um, what, uh, on a personal note, I don't know Israel Desanya. What he says, I don't like. And, uh, you know, the way he approached this whole thing, this whole fight that was busy being made, I don't like it at all. When it comes to you as a fighter, the man is great. He's done great things. It's just time for me to take over, like I have, and that's why I'm champion of the world. Question for Israel. Israel, obviously, you know, you were meant to fight Drikas in Sydney, and then we know how badly banged up your body was, and we saw your performance against Sean. Are you happy that actually you're fighting him now rather than fighting him then? Yep, definitely. Um... Yeah, definitely. I, um, I'm happy I took the time off I needed. I'm happy I, uh, you know, let my body heal, let my mind and, and spirit relax. And then now I'm clocking back into work and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on that. You know, you have done more media duties than nearly anyone in this business. You did, took some time off to come back here, get this reaction. Have you missed this? Have you missed being at the top? I missed you guys. I won't lie. At first, I was a bit... I was a bit salty, you know, you know how the streets is, but then um, this is what I do. I do this shit every time. And shout out to Tim for helping me chop out the fat. But um, yeah, the media stuff was cool. This is cool. And Sunday's gonna be even cooler. He says he's gonna make it an ugly fight. Can you meet him in there and make it ugly and still come out the winner yourself? I mean, Costa tried to make it ugly, but you know, they all try, but I, I, can, I can fight. I can get muddy with the pig, but also I can keep it pretty. Question for Dan Hooker. Dan, earlier this week you said this is a greedy, selfish career choice that you've made. You know, if on a greedy, selfish note, to be able to come here, get a big win, put yourself back at the top of the division when people have written you off, selfishly, how good would that feel for you? Oh, you, you, you can't count me out of a fist fight, brother. I've got, a, I've got a puncher's chance against any man on the face of the planet. You know, he says that he's got a surprise for you in there, but I'm curious, if you had to make a bet, how early is he going for a takedown? Oh, the surprise is there is no surprise. That's the, old, that's the oldest trick in the book, brother. I got something in store for him, too. And question for Gamrot. You know, there's been a lot of talk about, oh, you're going to come out there and you're going to wrestle down and maybe you should fight in a different way. Do you feel like you have to fight differently or do you just have to go out there and win and that's your job? I am not here to spark the spiders. Your boy go to sleep. A uh, question for Drikus. Um, I believe you said in an interview this week that I need to be perfect to beat this man on Saturday or Sunday morning. Um, in your mind, is that like a show of respect for Israel's skill set or just what you feel you need to execute in order to win this? And what does the perfect fight look like for you? It sounds like that. That's what it sounds like when the guy you're cheering for loses. But um, um, at the end of the day, my man, it's a 100% a sign of respect in the sense that this man in the octagon, he was there for a reason. So I need to be perfect for this fight, like I have been for every other fight. Perfect for that fight, to be able to win that fight, and that's why I'm unbeaten. 
in the UFC, and that's going to stay that way because I have the perfect preparation for this fight. And for Israel, uh, going off that, um, him saying he needs to be perfect, you've fought over 110 combat sports bouts. You know it doesn't always go perfect in there. So do you take that as a sign of respect? And um, you know, do you feel like he needs to be perfect to beat you? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it as a sign of respect. He, he respects what I've done in this game. He respects that I've paved the way for him. And yeah, he, I guess if he wants to have to be perfect, if he feels that way, sure. But man, it's hard to do that against me. And just back to you, Drickus. Uh, you closed your media day yesterday with a, a message to Israel about yes, the social media stuff. Is there anything you want to say to him about that oh, now? Oh, yeah. The, the photo he got, I'm assuming it came from his For You page because it was me as a teenager. So searching naked teen boys, if that's on your search engine, man, you need to check that shit out. Hey, that wasn't me. That was my... <laughs> Somebody's mad. <laughs> it must have been cold that morning. Don't worry about it. The authorities that should be worried, not me, man. And just one for you, uh, Tattoo of Asa. I know you said yesterday you have a... Uh... <laughs> Fucking ass shy! I know you said you have a uh, bet with Drickus over the rugby match coming up. Can you uh, share the terms of that bet? Yeah, I put 500 on the Wallabies. I didn't know the cunts lost last week. Uh, a bet's a bet, and no, I'll pay up. Quench for Kakar, France, straight ahead. At Media Day, you know, you told the story the first time you saw Steve. It was one of those regional fights, and then eventually he did get signed to the UFC. So I'm curious, from watching that fight, was Steve a, a name that you knew would eventually cross your path? Or and are you surprised that it was this quickly into his UFC career? First of all, what's up, guys? I know there's a lot of Kiwis here, a lot of, um, a lot of my people have made the trip over, a lot of Kiwis that live in Perth, so uh, thank you for turning up, I appreciate all the support. Uh, to your question, yeah, for, uh, you know, Steve's a, a tough challenge, he's a great opponent, he's done well in a short time in the UFC, but uh, I'm the vet, and uh, I'm going to remind everyone, I'm one of the best flyweights in the world. And to go off of that, you fought several former champions, current champions, and all that. Can Steve present any problems in there that you haven't seen in the octagon? You know, we're, I'm not looking past Steve at all. He's, he's all I'm focused on, and, and I'll be dialed in, locked in, ready to um, knock out the hometown boy. And, and question for Steve. Obviously, uh, you're the, you, you represent Perth up there, so how good does this feel to be here for Perth? Um, yeah, this is more crazy than I expected the Perth crowd to be. Like, we're not even at the event yet, just the press conference. So, yeah, this, it's awesome to be a part of. And, um... <laughs> and yeah, I'm just excited to put on a show. He's got a, a, tough, opponent in pro and a tough opponent in front of me. Um, he's looking to knock me out. I'm looking to knock him out. So, let's make it happen. And to go off of that, obviously Kai has one of the longest resumes in the UFC for flyweight. He has a lot of tape on him. I'm sure you've broke it down. Are you seeing holes that, you know, maybe his past opponents haven't been able to take advantage of that you think you can on Sunday morning? I don't know if I see different holes than other people see, but of course I see holes. Everybody has holes in their game, and um, yeah, I'm looking to exploit them and take, take the win. Question for Jairzinho. Here, straight ahead. You face some of the hardest hitters in the heavyweight division, like Francis Ngannou, Alistair Overeem, Junior Dos Santos. Ty is also one of the hardest hitters at heavyweight. Does he present any problems that you haven't seen in there? Yeah, he's definitely a problem. He's a strong guy. He's the heavyweight division. Who hits first? You know somebody's going down. I mean, I've been in the game for a while, and I think I'm more than happy and honored to be in Australia fighting against one of their own. But other than that, I'm a big problem for any man in the division, whether it's Thai or whoever. In a media day, you said, you know, you kind of look forward to not having to train these you know, for a wrestler. You're not assuming he's going to shoot for a takedown. Is there any chance one of you, you know, shoots for a leg in there, or are you going to stand there until someone falls down? I mean, it's MMA, so... Fuck no. So aware, yeah. <laughs> Let's make it happen. I love a good striking match. I'm a powerful guy, you're a powerful guy, let's go.
Question for both Ty and Jarzinho. Are either of you expecting the fight to go past the first round? Oh, jarzinho has been around for a long time. He's had many kickboxing fights, so uh, I think the main thing we train for this, this camp is to, to go the three rounds. But, uh, fuck, we're heavyweights. We're going out there to knock each other out, and that's what we're going to do. Hey. I mean, I'm a smart man. I'll not go in there and trade with Ty. No. I'll go for, for a crazy match, but I'll pick my punches. A uh, question for Drikas as well. Um, how much extra motivation has it added for you being the enemy, being in enemy territory and with the Springboks here as well, to possibly do a double Saturday night and Sunday? Well, I think I heard the whole thing, but um, let me tell you this, extra motivation, didn't need extra motivation to do this. Uh, I have the same motivation that I had when I won that belt, the first, same motivation I had when I had my debut, and the same motivation right now as a champion. At the end of the day, I don't come in here as somebody who needs to change anything because I have the belt. No, no, I'm not going to defend my belt. I'm going to keep on fighting like I never had that belt. Because once I walk in there, that belt is given to an official. It's there. It's nobody's belt. The belt is given to the winner at the end of that fight. So for that time while the fight's happening, that's nobody's belt. And I'm willing to die and take a life for this belt. First, uh, question for Kai. Of everyone from City Kickboxing on the stage, you are kind of the odd man out. Everyone else is getting cheered, and you have the one fight in the division that gets you booed in Perth. How is that for you, where your teammates are getting love, and you are kind of the enemy to the crowd? I feel the love, you know, all this energy, all this, I love this. If you're with me, against me, it's all energy, um, and I'll be feeding off it come fight night on our Sunday, so I welcome it, um, and this is the fight game. I don't have to hate someone to fight someone, even though I'm, I'm not in my hometown, um, I'll, go, I'll win you over by the end of the night. Uh, questions for Drickus. Uh, hey, Drickus. Uh, when this fight was announced, you mentioned that uh, it'll be done in spectacular fashion. Um, is getting a finish over Israel Adesanya the main priority, or is, or is getting a win simply enough? Well, let me tell you this. Getting, getting the win is, of course, the main priority. But looking at every single fight I've had, first opportunity I get to get a finish, I'm going for it. Am I looking for a finish? Absolutely. It doesn't present itself. I'll make it happen. And if not... I'll be doing that, looking for a finish for 25 minutes. We've seen it before. Every single fight, I go out there and try and finish, and that's what I'm going to do again. Uh, next question is for Israel. Israel, um, after you lost the title uh, to Alex Pereira at the end of 2022, uh, you returned with one of the most impressive performances in UFC history. What will people say on Sunday uh, after UFC 305? This is new, this is new. This is new for me. Uh, I just wanna show you guys how great I am. And he said himself, like, he, he, he has the belt to prove that he's great. I was great without the belt. I was great before the belt, and I'll be great after the belt. I'm Israel Adesanya, and I'll remind you guys that I'm the last style bender. My last one's for Steve Ursig. Uh, Steve, obviously, you're here in front of your home fans, your family, your friends. What has this moment and this whole week been like for you uh, on, a, on a personal level? Yeah, I mean, kids dream about walking out to a packed stadium of uh, people screaming your name, and I just sort of got thrown into it, and I'm very excited. It's a dream come true, and I can't wait for Sunday. Sir, go ahead. Uh, mate, Dan, this is for you. You've already won the first round for best dress, clearly. Mate, are you going to fight as well as you're dressed, and who is your tailor? Oh, I didn't come here to look good, but I came here for a fist fight at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, this, I love ugly. Cheers, brother. Nice, mate. And Izzy, the great Ned Brockman took a lot of inspiration from you during his run. 
Do you need any external motivators for something like this, or is this another day in the office? Uh, shout out to Ned, one of the greatest shout Australians to, to ever live. Um, I don't really need any extra motivation. For me, this, this whole time away was good for me to soul search, find myself, and realize that I'm still new at this and I can still get this done. But um, yeah, I don't need any extra motivation. He's my motivation. Fuck the belt, I'm coming for your head. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Question for Arasanya, Teddy here from KO Sports. With every, with every iconic victory, you've given us a celebration, something to celebrate. Now, if with this, if it's a given victory, do we see a happy Gilmore style celebration? Oh, golf. Nah. <laughs> um, I don't really know what's gonna happen after the fight, but all I know is I'm gonna fight for the fight of my life this time. The last fight, I'm, I'm embarrassed even myself because I'm an artist, I like to show off. That last fight wasn't really me. I was the most, and still am, the most active champion in UFC history. Five fights in 16 months. Fuck the fights, the camps. Training with Dan Hooker, training with Carlos Albrecht, beating me up every day, it's hard. So now I've taken my time to do everything right, and yeah, I'm gonna focus on the fight. Whatever I do afterwards, we'll see. Godspeed. Uh, First question for Drikus. I don't know if you've seen over the past 24 hours, initially Izzy was the favorite heading to this fight, but as we've gotten closer, those odds have shortened. Do you, what do you think about that? What might you attribute that to? Well, there's no place for odds in, a, in the octagon, I have to say that, but I mean, obviously the odd makers are seeing what I know and seeing what uh, the people are seeing. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty evident. Like I said, the man needs to be motivated to be back here. He had a, you know, emotional feel to be back here, he said it, he's motivated by me. That's what gets him back in here. I'm motivated by greatness. I'm not motivated by some person. If he doesn't step in, I'll be the same motivated fighter that steps in there. And anybody can see this. Once again, it's about how bad do you want it. It's pretty evident how bad I want this. And on Sunday morning, there will be no doubt of how bad I wanted this. And to Izzy, do you have a response? Um, when did I become the odd dog? You know, it's, it's a, it's a pick'em. It's very... Nobody said anything uh, about dogs, bro. Chill out. <laughs> I said that... <laughs> Better shut the fuck up or I go get my coach's taser as well. Fucking taser balls. When did I become the underdog? You're not the underdog. Okay, me. wait, what, what does this mean? How do I make money off myself? I mean, you bet on yourself like you always have, right? Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Wait, I remember you. I do apologize, I will say. I missed the question. It's all good, no worries. Any questions? I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you. To Mateo Scamrot, do you, do you find it frustrating that people still don't believe you might be in line for a title opportunity, given all your ranked wins, if you do happen to beat Dan in the weekend? I don't care. I come in here and ruin the show. You will cry Sunday morning, guys. This is a simple fight to me. And, and to Dan, are you going to be calling for a title opportunity if you happen to beat Gamrot? Oh, I can't look past that guy. He's, he's got some skills, but that's top five, brother. You, you're in shooting distance of the belt, for sure. And finally for Steve, brother, we all love you. Perth crowd loves you. Good luck this weekend, man. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Go ahead, my man. Uh, this is a question for Izzy. Um, culturally, you know, this has been made about culture. We didn't want really to make it about culture, but, you know, someone made it about culture. Amen. So, so here we are. Um, the question for you is, I grew up, you know, my parents were in Nigeria. They obviously moved to a country as well to better themselves. Um, when you win the belt again, do you plan on taking it back to Africa again? On Tuesday, I'm going back to Nigeria. I think Friday, I'm going to South Africa. And then the next week, I'm going back to New Zealand. I am a child of the earth. I'm a child of the earth, and when I take this bet, I'm taking it everywhere with me. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, question over here. Are Man. you taking the servants with you when you're going back? Are you taking the servants with you Have you going back? What the fuck are you even on about? My God. My God. It's obviously a see and tell. We can see that. What do you mean? You're saying that I bro, made it about Bro, shut the fuck culture. up. You don't even I know anything about, about my story. 
You have no idea who the fuck I am. I don't care about your story. I don't care about your story. Listen, my father and myself had to wake up at 4 a.m. and clean the banks while my mom studies to be a nurse. You don't know my fucking story. Amen. Don't oh. fucking speak of my story if you don't know my story. I don't care. I will show you story. who you are Sunday. So right now, shut I the can't fuck wait. up. I can't wait. In bye bye, let's I you see. You're talking about I made it about anything else. You did. Being you the did. First even you couldn't even respect African the people chef. of the land. I am the Walking first. In the country, you were the I one am. not even doing anything. I took my shoes off to connect with the people, with the mob. What did you do? You stand there and try to mean mug me. Are you stupid? My man. I'm not you, your fucking man, bitch. This is my no. land. Oh, shit. Just not that. You're going to do what I did? Take as the first residing African. That was Sounds exactly silly. it. You, you never like changed that. Pig. You can't change that. I will that. slay you, Impossible. Porky Pig. Shut up, Pink Fit. You can't change the facts. But you can't change those facts. You got one more? Yeah. One more question for Ty. Um, Ty, obviously, you're, you're coming off a, a couple losses. You've had a hard camp in... Dubai, you're gonna get that win for Western Sydney or what, bro? Western Sydney to Western Australia, baby, let's go. Uh, you know, win or lose, I'm gonna go out and fucking put on a show for everyone. So, let's go. Last question, my man, go ahead. Uh, just a quick one, Dan, you fought to get on this card, man. You put it out there, you wanted Gamrot. How's it feel for you to actually be here in Perth right now and feel this energy from the fans? and have it all pay off and you be sitting here right now. The boys are fired up, the crowd's fired up. <laughs> we still got two days to go, boys. <laughs> it's for this, it's for this, it's for this crowd right here. I was, in the, I was sitting in the stands last time and they almost blew the roof off this damn place. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and setting this crowd alight. And just final question for you, Israel. Uh, Izzy, uh, I know you said you manifested this when you were watching the Robert Whitaker Drickus fight. Yeah. How has this energy from Drickus today in, in the build up? How's the energy from Drickus today and in the build up? How's it matched to what you manifested and imagined leading into this? And what are you feeling right now from the energy in the room? I, he, he touched the subject there because I, I do this for my family. I do this for the people I love and I'll, I'll fight for you forever. I swear to God. Um, watch this. I'm a, look, I'm a fucking human being. I am a man. I can cry and whoop your ass at the same time. Um, <laughs> I feel the love from the crowd. First time I fought here, 2-2-1. That was February 2018. That was me making my dream come true. Sunday, I'm gonna fucking kill your dreams, bitch. I wanna fucking kill your dreams. What a note to end things here at the press conference. Perth, no crowd quite like you. Ceremony away, and tomorrow at 11, we're going to clear the stage and square off these athletes.